What's happening, Andy here? I am joined today by Carl from Keypoint Intelligence and Jim and Rich from Donald and McCarthy. How are you guys doing? What's happening? How's it going? Andy, doing what's well. going on? What's Good happening? It's going great. It's going awesome. We are here on a uh, nice, cloudy, post-eclipse day in Rochester, New York. Carl, I assume you're down in headquarters at Keypoint? Yep, down here in Fairfield, New Jersey. Earthquake, um, eclipse, we had it all the last five days. Yeah, you guys have had a busy week down there. I hope you got to see it. We uh, we did not get to see it here. I had friends come in from out of town and and uh, we couldn't see a thing. So it was a bit of a bust. Mm. Um, give us a little quick overview on. I, I know everybody understands and knows who Keypoint Intelligence watching this video. Um, you know they know the books, they know the spec checks, but we're here to talk about e-commerce. And so why don't you just give us the thirty thousand foot view on what you guys are doing in e-commerce? Sure. So we've had this product called Uverse, which I'm sure a lot of people in the industry are aware of, especially dealers. Um, and this system is a product of families that's fully customizable. Um, I'm not going to get into all the modules, but the the net net here is that, you know, we enable sales help um, as well as uh, a full e-commerce experience through the platform, along with a quoting tool that helps with proposal writing, et cetera. That's the 30,000 foot view. Well, you guys do a ton and you are a huge resource for dealers, but we're here today to talk about e-commerce. And and so I want to introduce, reintroduce Jim and Rich. Um, why don't you guys give us the background? Give us, uh, tell us what each of you guys do there, Donald McCarthy and, and what is DM? Who, who, what do you guys do? Who do you service? What's your, you know, your location and all that? I'll let you know who I am. I'm Jim George. I'm the president of uh, Donald McCarthy Enterprises. We go by DME. Um, and Rich can tell you all about all the places we sell and service to. So, yeah, I am Rich Brandenburg. I'm the senior vice president of sales, uh, in charge of the whole sales organization. Uh, we have nine offices in five different states, and uh, we sell Rico, Toshiba, Sharp, and have a wide variety of a portfolio of EV charging stations, IT services, software solutions, and also includes mailing. Very cool. You so you're you're your what I would call a typical office equipment reseller. Um, you're a Midwest dealer, and one of the things I think you know one of the trends we've been looking at for the last couple of years now in our industry is e-commerce. And you guys have you're you're what I would call an early adapter at DM, right? Um, this is yep. something I truly believe the dealers in our world need to move into, and you've already. Well, gone a little bit beyond dipping your toe. Why don't Why don't we talk about um, a little bit about what you're doing with e-commerce and and you know how you see it fitting in? And I've got some questions for Carl because you, there's no coincidence that you guys are here and it's you're a Uverse customer, right? So um, I do want to spend some time talking about what it was about Uverse that you you know liked and 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 what pushed you to pull the trigger on that. But let's start with just the overall. You know, what was it about e-commerce that made you guys want to go into that and, and, and pursue that? I, I think, um, you know, one of the number one reasons is the way our new, our newer customers, the millennials are acquiring product. You know, when you go to Amazon, you're not making any face-to-face -face contact or anything like that. So just looking at what might be the next wave or the, you know, just an introduction into the e-commerce in our space. I remember giving out our first quotes and wow, just, you know, you, you always wanted to hide all your information and not let the competitors know what you're doing or what you're selling. And I think all of that has kind of went out the window with the internet in general. So uh, I, I didn't want to be the last one out there um, so we, we got into it and we definitely didn't tiptoe into it. We, do, we, we've done our research and I think it's, it's been a good thing so far, Rich. Yeah. I think you have to understand your buyers changed, um, and it's continued to evolve and the easier we can make it is to do business with us, um, be our visibility on, on the internet, uh, customers can get on our website, look at our equipment, look at our products. Um, they can re resource those and look at all the different items and then engage us when it's appropriate to have a conversation about price. So it's it's uh, it's been a win-win for us when you talk about sales enablement and, and visibility uh, for the company. So how long ago did you go live? Um, I, I believe it's been six months or... Oh, wow. Around there. Okay. 
And so, you know, let's let's back up a little bit and and tell me about the kinds of things you're putting on there. Because one of the arguments, one of the concerns, I think, um, a lot of companies like you, they look at this and they say, well, I'm not Amazon. I'm not going to be Amazon. I don't have any desire to put all my stuff on there. So how are you using it? I don't, I'm, I'm going to guess you don't have every product you, you know, your A3s aren't on there, your production's not on there, but you've got other stuff. So what kinds of things did you start with in putting it on there? And, and who is this available to? Is it available for all people on your website? Is it for just customers? Is it a portal? How, how, how are you setting it up? Yeah, so it's on the front page of our website, and, and there's, a, there's a button that says Shop Now. And we initially started with our core A3 devices. So we started with Toshiba, then Sharp, and then Rika. We have all A3, A4 on there. We also elected to add EV charging, and we also elected to add on software solutions. Now, obviously, those are a little bit different when you get into an environment. You have to do a lot of discovery and find out the, all the exact parameters, but to give an overall idea for a customer. If I'm looking at equipment, then I'm also looking at software. And then, oh, by the way, wait, there's a tab for EV charging. It's it's all right there. So we started with that um, as you know, products change and, and evolve and manufacturers roll out with new uh, products, then it, it gets automatically updated in the system. Very cool. Well, I'm surprised you did put A3 on there. I thought that would be a more challenging one and kind of, I expected that to be one of the last products um, companies like you would start putting up online. So tell me about that experience. How how has that gone? And and are you selling anything? Are you selling A3 online through your portal like that, through your e-commerce site? Yeah, it's been great. We've had a handful of leads come in and, you know, they they we can't see the price, right? So once we get to that point, then it's, they would connect with us and then we'd come in and form as a lead and then we'd, we'd engage the appropriate rep for, uh, you know, wherever the location is. So, yeah, we've had uh, a dozen bleeds come in and, and we've converted A3 sales where the rep hasn't been out in front of them. It's just been, you know, someone looking online and then we get the analytics of actually people that have been looking online. So, well, that's the dream, right? You come in in the morning and you've uh, got your um, you got an order sitting right there, essentially. So yeah. you're, you're doing more than one a month, um, yeah. one pretty solid. I, you know, it's more than just a lead, right? I mean, these guys go through the whole process by the right. time they get, get to the end of, I would think, configuring and getting that machine set up. They want that machine, right? It's probably not a ton of, uh, I, I'm sure there's negotiations that go on, but by the time they get to the end of filling that out and setting it up, they want that machine, yes? We just we just had one this morning for EV charging that didn't realize that we did it and they were doing research online and they found it and they said, hey, you're not on this on the list of for the RFP we're getting to publish. And uh, we want to make sure you get registered. So, <laughs> it's so it a, helped you. A very large EV charging opportunity for us that we weren't even in there. Uh, but because of this, it, it, it put us right in there. So, well, EV yeah. charging is kind of a nice little side hustle that, that a lot of dealers are picking up, right? <laughs> like you guys, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's an ACDI. Remember, I'm not guessing I ran the press release. So, I'm, I'm being funny now, but you guys are an ACDI. Um, partner. They just announced another one yesterday. And again, another thing that fits into the whole e-commerce solution. So quick question though, what's the traffic on your website been like since you implemented this? Is it up considerably? Is it a little blip? Is it, I would imagine that you're getting a lot of SEO benefits with, with an e-commerce engine. Yeah, it's definitely been going up. I think we ran the metrics yesterday and we're, we're seeing a, a large uptick in, in traffic to our website. Um, and, and, and going back to what you were, what he was saying before, what, when a customer is going through all of these steps to configure a unit, that's a lead I wanted all day long back in my day of selling or carrying the bag. So to be able to come in and have that right there on your screen, and now we do negotiate out aid out the price and there are certain customers they they really don't want to meet face to face so we're doing it just like this this call right now and <laughs> and that's that's the first opportunity for us is is to to provide that to any of our customers so they can go on the website and shop on their own at their own time without somebody standing over them telling them what they need and allowing them to figure out what they want that's a great point. You know, I, that, and that's exactly how I buy. You know, I'm sure I could use help with somebody consulting. I could take somebody's advice, but 
until I get to that point where I want to ask, I just want to look at it. I don't want anyone to bother me. I want to look at the reviews. I want to see what other customers have said about it. And if they like it and there's enough of them, then I'll trust it. And, and honestly, I don't need to talk. <laughs> I'm not part of the problem and I'm an ex-sales rep. So it's, it's terrible to say this, but I don't want to talk to us. I don't want to talk to me. Right. I don't want somebody yeah. coming in, interrupting me right. in the middle of the day, talking about how they're going to save me all this money when I'm ready. I'm ready. And there's a certain component of customer, a certain element of customers out there. That's how they buy. And, you know, we're at the point now, I just saw some research. Um, it's almost 80 percent within the next couple of years of all all acquisitions will be done online. I'm not saying all of ours, but just in general. And just think of your own patterns. Carl, um, I can't get a word in edgewise with you, so I'm going to stop you there. <laughs> and uh, I do want to, I do want to kind of back up and talk about the engagement. Like, how did these guys get to you? Um, what was that process like? And then, you know, once you went back and forth a little, once they had settled on you, how did we get to where we are today, where they've actually got a live e-commerce website on, you know, running and actively taking orders? Or, or yeah, Jim, Jim. Jim, why don't you answer the whole? Um how you came to us and then I can kind of add some color commentary. Just I, you've already said so much for me to unpack here that I need to get a couple of thoughts out there. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. So um, I've seen several different, um, I think at the BTA meeting in Denver. in Denver was kind of the final presentation that I needed to hear. Um, had also watched, I believe, a blog pr prior to that pertaining to e-commerce. And and I was, you know, intrigued, a little bit leery about it, said, wait, maybe that is an opportunity to sell A4. Asked a couple of stupid questions during the uh, presentation there in, in Denver. And uh, I said, you know what, uh, I'm ready to, to step forward. And that's kind of how I am once I make a decision to do something. I try to do homework beforehand or usually always do homework beforehand. But at that meeting, I decided, you know, I'm moving forward with this. So then, then started the negotiations and, and uh, yeah, the fun stuff that we had to do face to face. Mm -hmm. All the implementation stuff. Yeah, I the was fun not stuff. part of that. <laughs> Neither was I. <laughs> and I think at Denver, you know, when Anthony made the comment that, you know, asked everyone to raise their hand if they used Amazon in virtually all the room. And then his next question was, when's the last time that you spoke to somebody live when you were buying something? Yeah. Which really kind of helped sink it in. But, you know, Andy, I know when we were at the ECS, yep. you, know, they, they, you, you had, you know, the new gold mine, right, is these data in these rooms and they, they had that slide up with all of the stats every minute of the day. And I don't know if you remember for Amazon, there's $550,000 every minute that Amazon is processing. So it was just incredible. And it's kind of, you know, that, that stat and the analytics of everything that's going on with your buyer just really, you know, Jim was jumped on all over it. And I think it's been great for us so far. That's I think a huge we're number. We're at the tip of the iceberg, I think. And we're just not really, you know, I know working with Carl and, and the team that, you know, we're, I think there's a lot more great things to come because we're just, we're doing it, but not doing it well <laughs> and seeing some good results. You got to learn. You got to <laughs> right? learn. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, with the EV. But when I'm what I'm hearing and I'm hearing a lot of good stuff, um, you know, the admittedly, I'm not very close to you verse. Um, I, of course, work with it and work with the people who work on it. Um, but it's I, I always had this preconception that a four would be the big seller. Me too. A four is relatively inexpensive. And maybe that is better for an e-commerce, a true e-commerce model, rather than a request for quote model, which is basically what DME is doing here. Um, and they're selling A3, which was extremely uh, pleasant to hear. I mean, I don't, I think that people would say, oh, you can't sell A3 this way because it's too big, too costly. There's too much money. You're not going to buy a $40,000 piece of equipment through Amazon. So why would I buy this through them? In, the, in a similar way, but I think that Jim and Rich are clearly proving that that anything is possible. That would be my first takeaway. My second one um, so far is that um, I, I just hear a lot of progressive thinking coming from George Rich and people at DME in general. You know, whether it's hopping on the EV thing, which is turning out to be a success, and the other things that we'll touch on later, and perhaps. Um, 
just a progressive minded company and progressive minded people. And, you know, uh, Jim just said he prefers to make quick decisions. He wants plenty of education. He seeks out that education. We were fortunate enough to provide him that education and fortunate enough to, you know, ultimately get the dual signatures on a contract, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, the third thing that I would probably say here is, and I think this leads more into like how you have the system configured and what have you, is just, you know, your I don't want to say future proofing, but looking to the future. You're talking about buying habits. And these are things that I'm not sure all dealers have at the front of their mind. You know, maybe they're just trying to protect their core and get through the day to day. But Jim and Rich are clearly thinking about the future. And while they have the system set up for a rest request for quote, doing the customization on our end and flipping a switch to turn it into an e-commerce model is pretty, I don't want to say simple, but it's a process that we can get through. And I think I'm going to make a prediction here that Jim and George, uh, Jim and Rich are eventually going to get to that point. Oh, I'm sure they will. How, how long, just out of curiosity, how, so now how long has Keypoint been doing, how, how long has Uterus been a product for you? I would say over two years, maybe it was soft launched about three years ago. Quote is maybe about uh, a year and a half now that we've been doing that, marketing that, selling that, et cetera. Um, so it's not like we're new, but listen, the adoption rate for things uh, something like e-commerce is obviously going to be slower than adoption rate for cybersecurity solutions and everything. We're completely honest about that. Um, but we're also honest about that things go very well right now. And, you know, we're just seeing more people talking to us, wanting to engage about this topic. And for my money, there's been, you know, security and AI have been the dominant topics technology-wise in our space since the pandemic. Security was even before that, let's face it. But those have been the two big ones. And e-commerce, well, not a technology that you can sell or anything like that. You, you do have it at your disposal. We're seeing more dealers wanting to engage on that and make the purchase. And I would say, I would say, I would argue that it is a trend, right? You, you mentioned AI. Oh, it's definitely a trend. You mentioned security. Um, so I, I do a lot of presentations and, and the, the, those, those are three of the four things I talk about in trends and e-commerce is one of them. And it's because companies like DM, Donald McCarthy, um, who are gravitating towards it and, and, you know, the early adapters like, like these guys, um, I do have a question about it, you know, and Carl, you kind of mentioned it, but my expectation is you guys would be using this for A4. And, you know, all we've talked about is how it's really become a tool for A3 in generating leads. Do you have A4 on there as a, can, can somebody yeah. buy, physically buy the product and you walk in the next morning and there's actually a sale there? Have you set it up in that way or, or not yet? Okay, so we haven't set it up where they can make a direct purchase. Um, that is our next step. Mm -hmm. Initially, jumping into this, I thought this was what was one hundred percent an A four play. Yeah, that's, that, that's where I thought we were headed with it. Um, we added the A three for some reason. Traffic is being driven towards A three. I'm not in certain cases. It's been customers that were initially looking at. A4, or they thought they were, and then they saw the capabilities of A3 and configured them differently. So it gave us a, you know, it might have, they upsold themselves without knowing it. But yeah, it was absolutely an A4 play. And then wanted to get to the point where we did put pricing on there and hey, if you want it. And also we could contact them and, you know, give them discounts based on, on quantity. But Initially, it was made just for A4, but currently we do not have the prices out there. We will soft launch some of the smaller A4 uh, prices on, on there once we have the right model out there. Because I don't want to put prices that that just yeah. where a customer sees it and goes, oh, wow, I, I can find that somewhere else cheaper. Then they'll disengage from my e-commerce site and I might have just lost an opportunity. So I'm a little bit... Uh, It'll be interesting to watch you play around with that. You might find the opposite. You might find that you bundle some services in with it and maybe people are willing to pay. You know, obviously we can't as an industry compete with an Amazon, right? right. But it's that it's that value that you're adding to it. It's, you know, the installation, it's the consulting, it's the help. It was like during the pandemic. I mean, it was that white glove service. We brought it to your house. 
with the laptop, set up your, your network, and gave you a device that, that would be adequate for your needs. So kind of tying all of that into that white glove service, I think it, it does enable you to, to raise your prices um, above an app, Amazon. But like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit touchy feely with it to ensure that we're not, you know, pricing ourselves out or, you know, making the it. Whole, the, the whole pricing thing, um, you know, Andy, you were just talking about a trend. I mean, in all the deployments that we have, um, most of them are requests for quote, not a true e-commerce platform. You know, they want that um, touch point, I guess, right now. And the pricing is clearly the, I don't want to say the stickiest issue, but yeah. it, it's definitely a, a big issue for dealers. Um, I think that at some point, you know, Jim feels like, you know, a lot of these worries and concerns are going to dissipate and we're going to move more toward what I think we all want to see, which is a major time savings in losing those touch points, just buy the product yeah. through the, um, and with our system being completely customizable, um, you know, uh, we have those options, but for the most part, we're, we're seeing this as a lead gen tool. And fortunately, we're happy to hear that Jim and Rich are converting some of those leads and on the A3 side to boot, which is awesome. Well, it's really cool to hear, you know, I mean, we all have an idea in our own heads about what e-commerce is and what it means. And, you know, my expectation for this call was very different than the way you guys are using it. And and you guys using it as a lead generation tool and getting, you know, really good qualified leads out of it is something I think a lot of dealers watching this may not have thought about when they're, you know, when e-commerce pops up in front of them and they think, do I want to do it? Do I want to look at it? Um, based Those on your it, do, it does. Sorry, Andy. It does yeah. beg the question for Jim yeah. and Rich, though. You know, you've you've gotten leads. They've been for A3. You've converted them. Awesome. What about those other leads? Uh, how qualified are they? Are they good leads? Um, are they also for A3? And, you know, I don't want to ask about why they weren't converted or anything like that. But are you happy with the level of these leads that you're getting through the system? I mean, Rich would probably want to add to this, but. I'm happy with any type of leads uh, that we get. And, and the way I look at it is we haven't did a massive launch like, hey, everybody look at our portal here, go to our, our e-commerce site. Um, I, I am getting there, watch this one. I, I, I'm gonna, you know, full court press, drive traffic into our e-commerce site. That's probably where I'll also launch some of the A4 with pricing where they can direct ship or we could uh install it so you know. yeah i know i think uh, i would echo that any lead's a good lead you know you got to qualify and take it through the sales process and we really didn't have to do any heavy lifting the other one that i didn't talk about is mailing mailing is on this and everybody knows that there's this impending doom of the decertification of mailing at the end of the year well you've got a lot of buyers that don't want to spend a lot of time with a rep looking at mailing right they have what it is it's been sitting there i gotta flip it here it is We've had several deals come in because of that and have come through that. Um, are they good? A lot of them have been good, you know, and I think dealers listening to this conversation, you know, I, I, I think it was great working with the team, Carl's team, implementing, right, putting the website together, what we were going to do, what we weren't going to do. It really was, wasn't as painful as I was expecting it to be. Um, all of everything was just pretty seamless. Um, it wasn't like they were just creating the wheel. It was, they've been doing this for a while and it was easy for us to get integrated into our systems and under our website and boom, there it is. And it looks like it belongs. It doesn't feel like it's, you know, what the heck is this? This does not bring any value. You get on there, you click on all the different screens and you go, oh, okay. All right. That's what also was... really good to hear, Rich. Thank you. Well, so, so <laughs> totally your not my doing, by the way. That was more like people like Chris Jones and Anthony uh, and our IT team. But yes, Chris, appreciate fantastic. that comment. Yeah, yeah, I know you'd let those guys know, but yeah, it's been great. Well, looking back, Chris, what, what were some surprises from this process that you hadn't anticipated? Who? Did Chris, you say Rich or Jim? I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? You said Chris, yeah, what were some, maybe oh. some surprises? Like what, what did you... Um, what would ha did you not anticipate when you were getting into this? What, what well, when I when when I said earlier, we haven't done a very good job of you know just advertising it and just running it everywhere, and we've been successful despite that, 
right? We haven't run a, you know, a full campaign blitz of get on the phone, call every customer, get on here, send this out. You know, we've done a slow kind of thing of putting it in invoices. We've been, you know, leave behinds with service technicians, right? Uh, reps have been putting it on their tagline. We've been putting things out on social media like LinkedIn. Hey, check out our website and you can shop now. Did you know? Those types of things. Um, and we've seen our engagement um, just through social media increase because of that. So yeah. but I think there's a lot more to do. So the surprise to me was, man, it's been good. And we really haven't, <laughs> other than more than just the standard college try, it hasn't been it's something we put a lot of focus on too. That's also really good to hear. And I'm excited, me personally, I'm excited to see what the marketing can actually do and drive yeah, traffic yeah. to your site. I mean, that's got to be tremendously exciting given where you're already at. And I would also say the the ease of implementation and the speed of it, that was impressive. Um, that how quickly this thing got up and running. I've been involved in certain projects that last a year and by the time we're we're done, we don't even want it anymore. <laughs> so this yep. is, they, they they have their stuff down, and that's kind of why I decided to go with them. Well, that makes yeah. it you know that makes it much easier to swallow. Um, one last question, and then we're going to kind of wrap up. And I do want to know: um, Are there plans? You guys have plans maybe to make like an internal portal? I always thought that might be something useful for just your current customers who maybe you put more product onto a buying list, a, an e-commerce, a, a real e-commerce, you know, shopping cart system where they can, they're already a customer, they're already signed up, you can give them pricing, it's behind a portal that nobody else can see. Do you have that set up or is that something that can be set up? Are you thinking about that? Uh, so we have it in several fronts already because we sell office supplies and furniture in some of the mm. other offices. So we work through Red Falcon where customers already have a sign in where they can go in and there's a huge catalog of you know office supplies and furniture there is another area that we're talking about with some of the gpos that we work through with some of our manufacturers where we have customers that will just log in and use credentials once we get to that point but we're we're not there yet but yeah we certainly have been talking about that piece because like you said andy that's going to be easy to work with right easy to do and meet the customers where they want to meet us at well, they're already customers, right? So that's yep. you've already sold them once. Hopefully they like you if they're coming back on your portal to see, you know, right? What other products you have. And I mean, yeah. the dream is you come in in the morning and there's stuff sitting there that you need to ship. <laughs> that's the way to do it. And we were all at that. We were all at that same meeting um, in, in at, e at ECS where Impact Networking got up there and they're not using you. You are using another one. But if the example is, right, that they're, um, they're making $150,000 a month, a month, and they're a big company, right? And they've been oh. doing it a while and they may have it set up very differently than you. But the example is they're making crazy money on it. You guys, you're seeing your website numbers explode. You're seeing good solid leads come in and you just started it. Um, and you're dipping your toe. Now you're looking to put it into other areas. So it's just for our world, for dealers, I, I just, I just think it's a, it's a must, right? I, I think it's a, it's something that everyone needs to do it's at another, one level another... or another. It's another diversification tool, let's be honest, right? And in a lot of ways, it has um, major positive aspects for internal operations, you know? Um, it's not that you're selling another piece of equipment. You didn't have mailing systems before, now you're selling mailing systems. Okay, you've diversified a little. You're actually diversifying by just giving people other options to buy stuff. And in a lot of ways, to Jim's earlier point, you're giving them the option to buy things the way they are used to buying them. Bingo. And they they want to buy that way. Let them buy that way. That, that's that's crucial. I got one final question, actually, for the boys at DME, too. Yeah. Um, and that is the whole EV charging stations being sold through um, through through the Uverse platform. Is that a thing yet? Is that something that you feel is going to take off? I know that the whole EV situation has been very good pretty much from the beginning, but talk about EV in terms of e-com, if you don't mind. Yeah, I want to I provide clarity with that opportunity. On one <laughs> DME never plans on hiring an electrician, you know, in-house <laughs> electrician, because I, I keep hearing this, this an argument that, well, they're, they're unionized. I, I, I outsource the electrical work. We we sell and service EV charging stations, but I definitely see this as one of the bigger opportunities and already has been 
when I look at some of the, the way our pipeline has grown on that side of the business, it, it's 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 through the roof. And that's with the U.S. being such a slow adopter of EV cars, including myself. You know, I still like the roar of an engine. So, but I also truly do believe that there will be a point where EV is, is the way to go or and we just want to be tip of the spear with that. And this has all helped us grow. And that's where I'm going to put the first campaign into our um, e-commerce site to ensure that we're driving traffic. It's like Rich alluded to, this customer that reached out to us and I saw the email, I was shocked. I was just like, wow, they have over 30,000 parking spots or even more, maybe, you one. know. So, and they're looking to put 10% of those EV stations. So the opportunities are just, they're mega. I mean, they're, they're very large and could mean a lot to our business. <clears throat> Certainly doesn't mean we're going to win, but just by having that on our e-commerce site, the customer notified us, I had no clue you did this. Can you register with our RFP? team so yeah. you know you have anything to add to that yeah no i think it's it's something that we're looking at um and, and again i go back to you know we you know working with carl and adding marketing to this thing i mean it could explode because it is it's a hot topic when you go out and talk to customers right they want to talk about even charging because they just don't know and what yeah. you find is a lot of them that were early adopters that have them in place they're not working and there's no one that'll fix them so, you know, you could just get on your app right now and pull it up the map and just look at all the points that are right around you. And you could see the ones that are working and the ones that aren't. And you'd be surprised to see, you know, how many aren't working. Oh, Only I guarantee there's tons of it, right? And so, by the way, I think that sound you all heard was was Mark Hart popping a bottle of champagne somewhere <laughs> listening to you guys <laughs> talk about this. But it's true, right? This is funded. This is Look, whether you agree, whether we all agree with EV being the right way or the wrong way, it doesn't matter because the government has funded billions and wow. billions of dollars wow. yeah. to say we want to build an infrastructure coast to coast. We want to put charging stations up everywhere. Um, so you guys have signed on to take it. Carl's company here is, is, you know, helping companies like you put this in front of people in a, in an e-commerce way, instead of having to, you know, luck into it with a copier sale where you're, you know, on your way out the door saying, Hey, do you guys have any, you know, now people are able to look for it, find it on you. And you, and when you put it on that e-commerce site and it starts coming up more on your searches in, in, on your website, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's a great circle of awesomeness where you're just getting more leads and those leads are sending, you know, more leads on top of it because of those leads. And 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 I think that's going to just build and build. As long as the government keeps funding it, you can't lose. Yeah. Well, to, to your point, Andy, with funding, uh, we just had, we got, we're working with a local city state government that they just wanted to, he wanted to get it done, something under 14,000, which would be probably two of the smaller end. And then he just got wind of a grant that they're applying for, which is now almost a million dollars. Right. It's just so there. It's, just it's there. Like, wait a minute. Now he wants to do the entire city. And you're like, holy cow, this thing just blew up because of, you know, to your point, the funding. Man, I love my V8, but I'm telling you, if I was uh, if I was selling office equipment, I would definitely be looking at bringing, you know, bringing in uh, EV charging stations as something just something else to do, because it's just one of those things comes around. It doesn't come around often, but every now and then you get something where the government is laying out money and you'd be. I think silly not to take a good look at that and say, we should try to get a piece of this. So um, this has been awesome. I really appreciate you guys coming on. I want to maybe take one last moment and have you guys, um, you know, Rich and Jim advice for people considering this, looking at this, and then we're going to have Carl finish up after I have one last question for him. I just say, do your research. You know, I, I, I think it was a very good decision for us. Um, if you want any references, call Rich. <laughs> his, his cell phone number is uh, but um yeah i i highly recommend just look at your buyers you know the millennials are getting older gen z the way they buy andy you were talking about how you like to buy it, it frightens me going in a store when someone's like can i help you what do you need what do yeah. you look for it's like I, I don't even know just give me a break give me let me yeah. alone give me space 
And when I'm ready to grab it, then then you can, you know, help me out. But um, yeah, I just see it as the wave of the future and you can be reluctant on 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 everything. And if, if we if we've always done that, then we've been driving horse and buggies to work. Instead, we got EV stations in our parking lot now in front of our dealership here. So yeah, I mean, I think if you're looking at diversification, you versus obviously an easy way to go with not a lot of heavy lifting. Um, you know, we've had some success stories and working with the team at Key Point has just been, you know, it's really has not been difficult at all. We've all been through challenging installations and implementations of ERP systems, CRMs that have just been a nightmare. This was not <laughs> at all. Um, I also think that, you know, if you're a multi line dealer, we didn't really get into just Key Point and, and utilizing our resources. I don't know how you can be a multi-line dealer and not have that. But to echo some of the themes you said, Andy, about, you know, with sales enablement and, you know, some of our larger, you know, um, colleagues, it's all about sales enablement, right? How do you get the reps in front of more folks and take advantage of that without, you know, having to, you know, utilize a ton of resources? This is a way to do it because that's where your buyers are. They're changing. They're looking for it. And you got to make it easy to do business with you. You do. I agree. Carl. Yeah, what's up, dude? I want to know. You know, we got a lot of we got a lot of opportunity out there. Um, let's let's talk about why someone should talk to you about uh, e-commerce. And I mean, you're a 60 year old company. You're you're one of the oldest companies in our industry. You're even older. You're older than us. We're only 50, for goodness sakes. Um, but you know, what, what is it about your program? What is it about UVerse? And and what's your your message to the other dealers um, who are who are similar in, in makeup to DM? Um, I mean, it really comes down to we we feel like we have the most comprehensive package out there for this industry. Um, a lot of it is based on BLIQ, let's be honest, which is the biggest resource for product level information in in the in in the in, the, in the imaging industry. Sorry about that. Um, the system is completely customizable, you know, and even even with the customization, you've heard Jim and Rich kind of laud our performance in terms of getting the system up and running, customizing it to their specifications, and just making sure it all works, and it clearly is working. Um, I think Jim and Rich and DME are just one example of a whole bunch now um, that we have kind of in our portfolio, our stable of U-verse partners, quote partners, what have you. Um, and we just feel like we're not going to step off the pedal here. You know, this is a pro this is a product that goes through incremental changes, um, just like BLIQ, just like the Info Center, just like a lot of our platforms um, that we offer here through Key Point Intelligence. So those are kind of some of my um, viewpoints of the product to keep it at a very high level. Um, and I think that dealers like to talk to dealers. Dealers like to talk to people, right? people matter. Um, even though UVerse kind of takes them away from talking to some people, dealers want to talk to them about other things maybe. And I don't think it hurts to have a phone call where you're talking about something that could benefit you financially as well as time savings and otherwise. Well, it's the irony of you know, not wanting to talk to a salespeople. Every one of those leads that these guys have, that you know, Jim and Rich have been talking about has has resulted in talking to a sales rep, right? I mean, the end result is a sales rep gets a hot lead of, of a machine that's pretty configured. And, and now they have a conversation based on something the customer already told them that they want it, right? And how they want it and when they want it. So um, I think you're just removing steps. I think it's something that's, you know, you, we've talked about it this, this entire conversation, but it's how people are buying now. Um, I think all dealers really need to take a look at this. And, and you know, you guys are a prominent company in our industry. Everybody knows you. So I think it's a natural place to start. I, I really don't see why anybody at this point in our space, unless you're selling, you know, unless you're getting out of the industry, um, I think e-commerce is something everybody really needs to take a hard look at. And, and uh, you know, you guys at DM have proven that it's there's a different flavor for everybody, right? I mean, it, everybody can set it up their own way. Everybody can use it their own way. Um, one company may use it as an actual shopping cart. One may, company like you may use it for leads, but it's something that's driving traffic to your website. You've already seen in six months, you're barely getting into it and you're already seeing leads. You're already seeing you know increases in traffic. You're already seeing social media. Um, you mentioned a big pop to that. So, you know, the benefits are obvious. It's, it's you know, it's moving things forward. It's letting people buy how they want. So, 
I'm down. I, I'm, I'm into it. I like it. Um, I'm glad to hear you guys are successful with it. And, you know, thanks so much for coming on and sharing your journey. Uh, Jim and Rich, you guys are, are, you know, somebody, you know, a company I think a lot of people turn to and look at uh, as innovators and and it's, it's fun to watch. And, and Carl, thank you for setting this up. Um, this was, this was great. And, you know, I think we all learned a lot here today. Uh, any last shout outs for, uh, for you guys, Jim and Rich? No, I just oh, want to say you. thank you for the opportunity to get on here and talk with you all. It was fun. Yeah, I would, I would, I would say the same to Jim is that this is the second time we've done a nice recording together in the last six months. And I just continue to enjoy working with Jim George. He's a great guy. Yeah. Um, he is. Andy. You guys are fun. Donald and McCarthy are fun people. I can, fun I can attest people, to that. Man. Good company to work with. Um, Andy, a shout out to you for hosting. And lastly, a little plug here. Anthony Ski will be on a virtual panel talking about e-commerce um, as part of a CDA webinar. And I believe that's in May. Um, so stay tuned for more information there. Follow social and um, please do register for it. Awesome. Well, thanks guys. It was great seeing you and we will, uh, we'll talk soon and we will, um, we're going to, we're going to check back in maybe in a little while and see how you're, you're doing with all this. I'd, I'd really like to maybe six or 12 months down the road, get another update and just see, see what the progress is like. Thanks for coming on today, guys. Thanks, Cheers. Guys. Thank you so no much. Thanks, Thank Andy. you.